Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And my name is Noel McBoy, and that was ASAP Adder and I on piano. And I'm sure we all know that awesome, inspirational tune. <laughs> yeah, take me out to the ball game. <laughs> Thanks, so That, like, inspired me. Yeah, While it was it's opening the show, I was inspirational. Like, oh, my God. There's a reason for that song. Well, unless you're a Cleveland um, Indians fan. Yes, then you're crying. Then you're That's not really, really in a good mood. They deserve to win. The Cubs did. It was 108 years. They deserve to win. You'll get it next year, Cleveland. But we have a great show for you guys. Yeah, we <laughs> we've do. got a gra- we've got a guest on. We've got a guest on today. Tracy Hellum is here, and she uh, works at the University of Montana. Well, she's an assistant professor at the Montana State University, but I think it's through the University of Montana, the partnership. But she is going to be talking to us about using ULA as an intervention for depression in sure. women. Yeah. So we'll hear about her from, from her later. Cool. We and we have, have a, uh, some city council stuff where they're talking about the new location of Costco, oh. which is causing some controversy for a lot of residents in the area. But of course, we'll learn more about that um, and your events with Noel McAvoy yes. later in the show. But first, let's throw it to weather. Currently, of course, if you if you were out and about last night, um, it was raining. It was, an, it was like a nice rain, but it wasn't too bad of a rain. But you can expect that rain to turn into snow starting today and then going on through the rest of your week. Um, it is currently 36 degrees outside. You have an 80% chance of rain and snow mixture. So basically, if it's raining down here, it's snowing up in the mountains. Um, you have a 50% chance of snow showers tonight and then continue on through Thursday. And then by Friday, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high of 38 degrees. So our cold, that cold spell is coming in. But of course, this morning was pretty good. And you can say, <coughs> I could pretty much say... Um, it's pretty much goodbye to a lot of the fall weather because we're moving pretty much into winter because winter usually starts okay so this is my interpretation of winter okay so it's just like um you're like hanging out walking around it's like we're in nice sweater weather it snows and then by the time you like get a winter coat it's back to fall again (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you're just like oh man and then and then you're just like and then the next day you're wearing like a sweater again it's like okay sweater weather it's cold again that's that's when winter. That's basically winter in Montana. Yeah, I agree. But you know, also we have had such a nice fall that there are lots of times where I wore light jackets. Yeah, this fall has been amazing. Yes, uh, a lot of great outdoor uh, scenery, uh, a lot of vibrant colors of the fall season. Yes. Um, last year we just kind of skipped fall and just went straight into winter. It basically went from summer, maybe like a couple days of fall. Yeah. But this year we actually had a uh, fall season it was a nice one. lasting a little over a month for sure. Um, but but yeah. winter will soon be back with a vengeance. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, we are. I mean, last year we had barely any um, snow, mm-hmm. t- not too much snow. But of course, this year we're expecting to have a lot more snow. But of course, um, if you want to find more information, you go to nationalweatherservice.gov. But if you want to find more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. We have to write that whole thing out because I'm not going to buy wakeupmissoula.com. I don't know. It's a licensing thing. It's probably like nineteen ninety five a month. Which, you know, I'm nineteen ninety five Bridger every month for not it's buying It's true. It. It's okay, Scott. You can like us on Facebook. That's free. Yeah. You can also uh, follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. That's also free. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us or just watch us online live, go to MCAT.org. Yeah. But before we go to our guests, I've got some news items for you guys. So this first one is kind of like uh, the, I guess, being in the right place at the right time. So in Reno, Nevada, uh, some FBI agents were investigating an armed robbery at a Reno bank, and they figured they had their man when they found the 76-year-old suspect hours later eating lunch at a nearby casino and asked him what he did for a living. He responded with, I used to rob banks. And so prosecutors say he made off with $2,731 in a paper grocery sack on November 9th from a bank across the street from the federal courthouse where he's scheduled to appear at a preliminary hearing tomorrow afternoon. Um, He has been convicted of at least five different bank robbery charges dating back to 1964. Wow. So he really is kind of a professional bank robber. Maybe he was just tired, though. You know, I'm just like... It's okay, you can catch me now. I'm 76, you know. Like, you're gonna put me in jail, I'll be dead tomorrow. Interesting life, though, to rob banks. 
Yeah. So the, I found that on the Washington Times. So up next, I found this on the Missoulian. Governor Steve Bullock has called for a modest spending increase in his proposed budget for the next biennium, despite revenue declines from key sources over the last two years. Wow. So his plan amounts to a 1.4% increase in spending over the next two years. I mean, it includes a $292 million of infrastructure and building investments through grants and loans, an expansion of business tax credits for capital investments, as well as new credits for offering on-the-job training, the expansion of the income tax credit to match the federal rate, the end of a tuition freeze at public colleges, a higher tax rate for families asking more than $500,000, and a 1% pay increase for state employees in November 2018, followed by another 1% increase a year later. He also is proposing an additional funding for education, preschool, senior services, child protection services, and mental health services, um, especially for teen suicide prevention. And he also includes a $3 million to help launch the proposed Montana Wyoming integrated testing center that will provide incentives for the use of carbon sequestration and other technologies that use coal with less release of carbon so it sounds like a lot of things that um, could possibly really benefit our state it's gonna be good for it even though it, it is kind of an increase and then my last a news event I also got this from the Missoulian so uh, in Stevensville, the city's largest employer, Selway Corps, had to reduce its workforce significantly Monday through layoffs or reduced work hours. They typically employ between 120 and 150 people, um, but they said that a downturn in natural resource industries, especially coal, has hit the steel fabrication company hard, and that's why they've had to lay off. But they said that there's been a steady decline in those industries over the past eight years, but they're hoping that this will be just be temporary. They're bidding on a lot of different construction projects and sites and so they're hoping to bring people back to work at the first of the year but for now they have to lay off which is really sad and I guess it is you know really gives an example of the state of our economy and I you know that's another reason why people voted in the election the way they did so I got those two last stories from the Mosulian and I got the first one from the Washington Times cool. so uh uh, I have some new programming on MCAT today. Of course, if you're interested in finding out more information about what's on MCAT, you can log on to MCAT.org um, to see the full list of scheduling. But of course, now I'm going to tease what is brand new tonight, starting at 5 p.m. on MCAT. And when we come back, we'll have our guests on. I, I pack an aquarium with me. And it's a little aquarium. In fact, I can show it to you after this is over. I've got, I brought it along. It weighs one ounce, it has gravel with it and everything. That's my gravel. And the clear water, of course, from Meadow Creek is so clear. And that, uh, that aquarium in the gravel weighs one pound and two ounces. That's where I finally got my food. I tried to get my food down to one pound per day. I can't seem to do it. I can get it down to one pound, two ounces. So all I have to do is carry the aquarium and sacrifice one day's of food. Who sets up your blog tours? Are you talking about blog tours or like physical book tours? Like an ebook, probably. Okay, so you're talking a blog tour. Okay. We regularly talk about this because at a point, blog tours were really um, a great way to promote your product, your book, um, because nobody else was doing it. Now, I actually did, I actually had a blog tour stop I owned because I wanted to see what was coming through the gates. And it was a great tool for me to see what was selling. Hey, you guys. We are back. We're here with Tracy Hellum, who's doing a study on ULA and how it could help people with their depression. So what can you tell us about this? So we're looking at ULA as an intervention for depression in women. And this is a feasibility study, so we're just trying to understand how ULA works for depression in people that experience, or in women that experience depression. Um, we are looking for 30 women to participate, and they will attend um, ULA for 12 weeks, and during those 12 weeks we'll measure their depression with a, a severity scale called the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale. Okay, so um, for people who don't know what ULA is, what is ULA? So ULA is a, um, like a fitness class that is designed to be a fun workout, so it's not, you know, often we think about exercise and it's um, more of like a physical thing, and this does have a physical com component, but it's also uh, really focuses on mental health and a place to go where you can dance and sing and connect with the community and have fun. So it's, 
it's not about how it looks, it's about how it feels, and it's a, a safe place for people to go and um, process their emotions or just dance and sing. Nice. And so what is the Hamilton Depression Scale? It is a semi-structured instrument that's, um, I mean, some of this is going to be some technical research jargon, but it's a reliable and valid instrument that looks at the severity of depression. So people that have a higher score on the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale um, suggest that they have a higher level of depression. So when people start the study, they have to have a score of 16, which indicates moderate severity, and then our hope is that that score will go down with um, attending ULA. And is that uh, determined by questions? Yeah, there are 17 items okay. on the scale, and then okay. we ask questions, me or my assistant Hayden will ask, um, will conduct the interview. We just ask a series of questions about their mood and their energy and sleep and things like that. Okay, nice. And so where is, where is the ULA studio? Uh, the ULA studio is on Broadway. It's mm -hmm. next to Mismo or by Lighthouse espresso I can't remember if that's what it's called but it's on Broadway and that's the studio that people can attend the participants and they'll have classes for free but there's ULA classes all over Missoula so they can attend classes anywhere but um, they will get free classes if they go to the ULA studio great and what does this uh, program mean to you what does it mean to me uh, well ULA came into my life at a very at a time when I really needed something that was happy and that where I could go and dance and have fun um, I had experienced a couple miscarriages and like needed something to really uplift my spirits. So ULA is really special to me and that's why I thought of the study design of looking at ULA for depression. Um, so I'm hopeful that it'll help other women that are struggling with um, but with clinical depression um, and possibly anxiety. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, getting all those endorphins out really helps you make you happy. And then looking forward to something, mm -hmm. I really can think it really benefits too. Yeah, so, it's just a place to go to like, I mean, where do you get to like sing and dance like nobody's watching? You just don't really get to do that anywhere. So ULA is a place where you can go and do that. It's true. I embarrassingly sing and dance everywhere. <laughs> like people are watching and well, I just do Well, then you should come to ULA. I know, I want you to. Sit right in. Yeah. And so how can people get in touch with you guys if they want to participate? Uh, they can email or call us, and Hayden is um, probably the best person for them to get in touch with. Is there a way for me to give you our email address? Yeah, should... yeah you can give yeah, just say it. Just say okay. it, and then we'll, <laughs> yeah. Um, so Hayden's email address is Hayden, H A Y D E N dot Ferguson, F E R G U S O N, and then the number one at Montana dot edu. Okay. Um, or his phone number is 243. Two five five one, and we can put that when we put everything on social media. We'll include that, mm -hmm. so when people want to sign up, excellent, awesome. And so, when did you start? When did you like think of this? When did you start this? Uh, well, I think the idea sort of evolved. I don't know, maybe in the summer. Nice. And then we had with research at a university or with anywhere really that involves human subjects that requires going through an ethics committee. So we submitted to the ethics committee at Montana State University, and then. Um, we started recruiting about two weeks ago. That's awesome. And do you, how many women do you have so far? Three. Awesome. Great. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking for 27 more? Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Great. Well, is there anything else you want to say? Um, I think we covered it all. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We'll be right back after this. Mm -hmm.
back and we've got some community events for today. Okay, so starting today's Wednesday, starting at 9 a.m. Um, and for the next couple hours, we've got lots of fitness classes. Uh, we have Matt over at Mask Studio is Pole Fitness. It starts at 9 a.m. And then at 9.30 at Mismo Gymnastics is Family Fun Time. This is for ages walking to 12 years. At 10 a.m. at the Learning Center at Red Willow is Yoga for Wellness for, with Rasa O'Neill. It's only $12 to drop in. Preschool Playgroup is at Ruth Zach Rose Sports Center at 11. That's $8 to drop in, $12 for siblings. It's uh, for ages walking to five years, and they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Taekwondo is at the Children's Museum of Missoula, starting at 11. And then, over at the Missoula Public Library, we jump all the way up to 3.30 in the afternoon with middle school writers. This is a writing group for grades 6 through 9, and uh, they give good feedback, play with words, and eat some chocolate. At the Missoula Art Museum, we've got our teen artist workshop from 4 to 6. Uh, today, it is going to be Blowing in the Wind with Stephen Blukert. They will, he will be guiding you to experiment with different and exciting new drawing techniques and tools, including atomized ink, cattle marker, and much more. At the University of Montana at 4 o'clock in the Payne Family Center, room 202, they've got a discussion entitled My Pecuni Life. And so it is a presentation that offers Pecuni language perspectives about Blackfeet ways of life. They'll explore relationships between past and present Blackfeet people's culture, expressed through language, and examine oral traditions. Yeah. At the Downtown Dance Collective, they got a Ballet's Greatest Hits adult ballet class starting at 5 o'clock. And then we've got some music at the Great Burn Brewing Company at 6. Old Sap is playing. And then at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at 6 o'clock, they've got a painting techniques class. Uh, you'll be able to learn exactly how different artists accomplish their painting technique. And then also at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a savory soups class. It starts at 6 o'clock, goes until 9, it'll be $42. At the Zootown Arts Community Center, they have Bob Ross Night. It starts at 6 o'clock. It's at $25 or $20 for members. And what they do is they drink some wine, and then they follow along to a Bob Ross video. At the Montana Natural History Center, we have Naturalist Trivia Night. That starts at 7 o'clock. It goes until 9. It's only a $5 suggested donation. Um, and then at the Wilma Theater is Portugal the Man. It's a band. They're playing at 7. Or Doors Open at 7. Show Open at, is at 8. Uh, we have a couple of book readings and signings at some of our bookstores. So at Fact and Fiction, Pete Fromm will be reading and signing his book, The Names of the Stars, 7. And then Willie Vlatton will be at Shakespeare and Company uh, reading from his newest novel at 7 o'clock. And then this next event, I wasn't quite sure about what I was going to talk about just because I don't know. But I think it's really, really interesting and definitely. Uh, so at the Missoula Public Library, they have a polyamory introductory meeting starting at 7 o'clock. And so what it is, is Montana Family Center is sponsoring two evenings of information and discussion on polyamory, which is having more than one partner, which is like having multiple, yeah, multiple partners. And so it's a family friendly event for people interested in learning about this way of creating uh, relationships with more than one person. And so it's, it's all based on family. You know, it'd be like, kind of like, I guess, like Mormonism, you know? But I don't know. I think that now that it's 2016, things have updated and people probably take a different look at it. I honestly have no idea. So it would be kind of interesting to go hear about this. It's not always about the Mormons. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you can be anyone you want to these days. So this will be at the Missoula Public Library in the large meeting room at 7 o'clock. And then actually in De on December 8th at the University of Montana, um, Dr. Elizabeth Sheff will share her research and experience on polyamorous families. So that's kind of interesting. So I guess stay, stay tuned in for that. And that's at the Public Library tonight if you guys want to check that out. And then, as we heard uh, from last week, American Piano Quartet is going to be at the University of Montana tonight at 7.30. They've got two pianos, eight hands, and a fantastic show. And we've got some music for tonight. Top Hat Lounge is hosting Paper Bird in the Ballroom Thieves at 7.30. Karaoke Contest at the Eagles Lodge at 8.30. Crap Tech, ooh, Karaoke the Badlander at 9. And then uh, Milk Crate Wednesday is at the Palace, also at 9 o'clock. So that's what's going on in your community. Up next, we've got Musical Notes with Asaph Adonai. Well, first I wanted to start out by saying, on this day and date, November 16th, 1963, they introduced the first touch tone phone. Oh, really? 
Well, it was pretty primitive in comparison to what we have today. I just thought I'd share that bit of trivia for That's trivia cool. buffs here. And as you guys know, this is my last and final story on musical notes because Friday I'm just going to go over some of the stories I've done and just pick out my favorites, nice. a few of my favorites. And uh, I wanted to thank you guys again because I've done hundreds of stories since February 25th, 2015. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think I'm up to like 400 stories that I've nice. done. And I did the top 10, you know, for 2015, 2016, and some of my favorites may not have made the top 10. And finally, my top 10 was based on you guys' reaction, based on views and what I thought your TV audience would like the most. Like when I did the Sally Field story. Yeah. You know, when she flew through the window, remember that one? Oh, that's so and funny. And was walking a dog so and it was floating in the air. Yeah. <laughs> so, it would be fun to pick my personal five favorites. And Scott, you might like this too. You know, when you teased me for Julie Andrews not making the <laughs> top ten. <laughs> so, <laughs> she might make my top five, but she'll always be my favorite singer. Just want the world to know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, um, for now, my last story, I couldn't think of a better guest for today's musical notes. Hollywood in the 1940s had a bunch of comedy teams like Laurel and Hardy, Martin and Lewis, Sheriff Andy Taylor and Deputy Barney Fife, even Liberace and his brother George. <laughs> But in 1953, one of the most famous baseball comedy bits of all time was between our guests on Musical Notes, where there was confusion at a baseball game because one of our guests wanted to know the names of the players on the team. And the other guest said, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. And of course, we're talking about William Alexander Abbott, known to the world as Bud Abbott, and Louis Francis Cristillo, known to the world as Lou Costello, and there they are on the screen. Bud Abbott is the gentleman with the hat in the, in the back, and uh, in front, that's Lou Costello. They were perhaps the greatest comedy team in history with that skit, Who's On First? And if your audience ever checks them out, it's pretty funny. It's something like 10 minutes long. And uh, they did that skit throughout their career. To tell you a little bit about these two, Abbott and Costello, they were a comedy double act during the early classical Hollywood era of the American cinema. And um, they were a vaudeville act. They did stage, radio, film, television, and that made them the most popular duo in the 1940s and the 50s, surpassing Laurel and Hardy and all the rest of those comic duels that they had at the time. There they are on the screen again. And uh, your audience can look this up and maybe order this uh, collection or look it up. But anyway, as I said, Abbott and Costello were the greatest team in the 40s and 50s. Bud Abbott, well, th th here's one of their cartoons here. They were so popular that they even had a Abbott and Costello cartoon, as you can see here. Now, Bud Abbott, the tall fella here, he was a veteran burlesque entertainer for show business, from a show business family. And the little guy, Lou Costello, he was a burlesque comic in the 1930s. Bud Abbott was born 1897, Lou was born 1906, so they go pretty far back. And they did their first routine in 1935 at the El Tinge Burlesque Theater on 42nd Street in New York at that time. And um, Bud played the straight man, the devious straight man, whereas Costello was the dim-witted fella that always got the laughs. Similar to um, uh, Martin and Lewis, you know, um, Dean Martin was the straight guy, Jerry Lewis got all the laughs. So these guys paved the way for all those other comics later, or comic teams that came later. So anyway, um, there they are again, Bud and Lou. And um, they did a movie called, one of their movies was called Jack and the Beanstalk. There it is, there's some pictures there. <laughs> and it was pretty much based on the story of Jack and the Beanstalk where Jack gets the beans, you know, his mother sends him out to get beans or get some food. He comes home with beans, his mother gets ticked off, so she throws the beans out. The next day there's a beanstalk they climb, and that's how the adventure starts. And let's see, what else can I tell you about these guys real quick? Um, Bud and Lou, they made 36 films between 1940 and 1956. They were the highest paid entertainers during World War II with a staggering 789-something thousand there 
for their earnings during that time period. So that, that's quite a bit. They also did a movie called The Invisible Man, and they did, um, let's see, Pardon My Sarong is how that's pronounced, and they did a lot of whodunit films and stuff like that. And then the day after the, the attack on Pearl Harbor, they had their prints put on the Grauman Chinese Theater, and in 1942, they were the top, the top box office draw for four films earning them $10 million. And that was during Pearl Harbor. So that gives you an idea. These guys were in big demand. They were very popular. And they probably brought a lot of comfort during World War II with their pictures and the attack on Pearl Harbor and stuff like that. And then eventually they made the transition in 1951 to television with the Colgate Comedy Hour. And they had their own show from 1952 to 1954. It was a half hour series called the Abbott and Costello Show. And it went syndication across the United States. And of course the war was since passed and they were still in high demand. But like anything else, Eventually, when novelties wear off, that's what happened with these two, is time change and stuff like that. But these guys will forever be known for their baseball skit, Who's On First? And on that note, my final story, I will quit. Nice. Cool. Thank you very much, Asaph. I think that was a very uh, good and appropriate story for your last one. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. So that was Musical Notes with Asaph Adonai. And on Friday, we will hear all about his favorites, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, just my personal yeah. five favorites. Nice. Well, yeah, we'll have your Thursday events uh, right after this art clip. And this is, I believe, the art clip from the Jury Student Art Exhibit at the uh, Gallery of the Visual Arts, which will only be running until December 16th. So check it out. It's at the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. Hi you guys, we are back and I've got some events for your Thursday. So this is what's happening in your community tomorrow. Up first at 10th a.m. over at the Providence Center, we have our NAMI Missoula Weekly Meeting. This is a free weekly meeting for anyone affected by mental illness or interested in learning about NAMI. At the Learning Center at Red Willow, we have a Learn to Meditate class that starts at 10 a.m. Um, and it'll be learning about practicing short meditation and breathing exercises with three minutes of meditation. Um, yeah, and no previous experience is, is necessary, obviously, as this is a beginner's class. And then we have another meditation class. It's meditation for veterans, and that's jumping all the way up until 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 1.15, at the Learning Center at Red Willow, meditation for veterans. 30-minute guided mindfulness practice, which is exploring the method of paying attention to breath to increase calm and reduce stress. At NAMI Missoula, they've got their Connection Support Group at 1.30. This is a free weekly support group for adults living with persistent mental health issues. Um, and that's located at 202 Brook Street. At the Missoula Public Library, we've got a Make It Ticket at the Big Sky Branch. It starts at, okay, so this is put on by the Missoula Public Library. This will be at the Big Sky High School Library. And so they've got a Make It and Take It with a Harvest Lean project each week. 
The Missoula Public Library has got computer electronics in their maker space from 3 until 6 o'clock. You can work on a project of your choice and learn how to use their equipment. Lego Club is at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30. Spider Feeding is at the Missoula Insectarium at 3.30. They're feeding Rosie the Chilean Rose Hair Tarantula. And then the Prenatal Yoga is going to be at the Open Way Mindfulness Center at 4 o'clock. This is for those pregnant mamas. And then at Great Bird Brewing Company at 5, they've got a discussion and a panel. They've got a panel of speakers, um, and they're going to be talking about From Carbon to Clean, 100% Renewable Montana. And so the speakers include adjunct Professor Peter McDonoghue, and they're, who is an energy conservation... Okay, yeah. So he's an adjunct professor, and then energy conservation coordinator Chase Jones, and then Chris Wom of Oasis Solar Inc., as well as David Merrill of the Sierra Club. They're going to discuss their vision for 100 100% renewable energy future from Montana. And then over at the Zootown Arts Community Center is a lady, ladies' pottery painting night. So it's at 6 o'clock. Um, so this is 21% for women off on all pottery. I guess guys can be there too, but they don't get a discount. Yeah, we're more of an ashtray. It's true. Cold. Yeah, and you, they say on this event page that you can also go over to the Kettle House and pick yourself up some beer and go over to the pottery and drink some beer and craft. So that's pretty fun. That will start at 6 o'clock. Then Dr Jeffrey Lake will be playing at Draftworks Brewing Company at 6. John Floridas will be playing at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. And then over at City Life Community Center at 6 o'clock, they've got their benefit auction. So City Life Community Center is home to Youth for Christ and 16 other nonprofit organizations, such as the Boys and Girls Club, LifeNet, and Missoula Parks and Rec. It exists to serve a much needed resource for teens and provides programs and needs for a variety of interests. So this is their annual benefit auction. Um, and so this will be a largest fundraiser of the year and the dollars raised at this event drive up their programs and provide operational benefit to all their nonprofit residents. So tickets are $50 and include a $25 credit towards any items purchased. You can uh, find those tickets online. At, it looks like it's www.yfcmt.com. At the Downtown Dance Collective, uh, oh, so yeah, so this is at the Downtown Dance Collective, but it's put on by, Mon, Mon, I think it's Missoula Urban Development, MUD. And so it's called Apples and Squares, Stomp Your Apples, Stomp Your Feet. So it's 7 o'clock. And so what it is, is they're going to be doing a square dancing from 7 to 9. And they'll also be doing a cider pressing out front. And then uh, the beat tops will be calling the dances and playing music. And so they'll also have a Q&A session to get you on your way to making your own snappy apples because they're going to be talking about cider fermentation. And it's only $2 for the event, and they'll pass a hat in, around for the band. That sounds fun. That sounds like a cute little Missoula time. Um, the Sunrise Saloon has got country dance lessons with Kathy Clark for 5 bucks at 7 and then REI has got a snowshoeing basics class. So if you want to learn how to snowshoe or get into that, you can sign up at rei.com slash learn. And then at the University of Montana, their uh, opera theater presents Love's All Shook Up. So it's at 7.30. They are performing operatic scenes featuring music from Carmen, The Elixir of Love, and Marriage of Figaro and others. Band in Motion is playing at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30. Shook Twins and Rabbit Wild will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 9. Uh, open Mic at the Broadway, also at 9 o'clock. Dead Hips with the Band Later at 9. Karaoke at the Dark Horse at 9. And my last event will be at the VFW at 10 o'clock. Hunter and the Gatherers are playing, along with Hermania, Hermania Jean, Lego Hundy, Drift, and uh, Hunter and the Gatherers will be last. So you guys, as always, check out MissoulaEvents.net for, um, for all of the events, or else the University of Montana website, the Independent or the Missoulian. But we're switching gears now, and I believe that we've got some city council. Yes, but I'm going to kick things off with a uh, Bonner Community Council Ooh, clip, okay. where they, uh, I think this is the best way to sum up some of the nays naysayers who uh, <coughs> really think that uh, climate change isn't a big deal. The climate's changing, and I'm all that much happier for it. There used to be glaciers here. It's getting warmer, thank God. There used to be a lake here. There used to be a lake, and the glaciers would come down here and feed it. So, enough said. I, I would not send the letter in the context that it's in. Thank you. So, so let me just respond to that a little bit, because um, you know, there's a, a general feeling amongst the people in our country that this is, the climate change could be a matter of opinion or belief. 
And if you look at the NASA website, Climate Change National Aeronautics and Space Administration, they will tell you that 97 percent of, uh, of climatologists in, around the world know that man is causing climate change. So every, all of us have a responsibility. It's not just limited to Milton. It's not just limited to the country. You don't have to be big to have an objection to your climate changing. And so, you know, this affects our community. It affects the state of Washington. It affects Montana. It affects West Riverside. And to say we don't have a right to object is just wrong. Gary, I wish that scientists knew what you believe, but they do not. <laughs> Science is not consensus. The scientific method, which you know very well, yes. you're a scientist, yes. mandates that you do not accept a hypothesis until you have tested every avenue to prove it is wrong. Yes. Enough said. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay. It's not for us to discuss. Well, except that you're just Thank wrong, you. Steve. I'm sorry, but uh, that's just wrong. There is a consensus, and that's the way it is. Science is not a consensus. It is. 97%, you're not listening. 97% of science agree that man is doing this. So that's a, about as much consensus as, as you ever get. All right, and that was uh, a little quote from um, Gary um, from um, the Bonner Milltown Community Council. And he's a member on there, and they're sending a letter to the, uh, the county. Uh, to just talk about some of the, uh, just like they always send a letter to the county to talk about some of their um, stuff that's going on in Bonner to the county. But of course, we're switching gears and we're going right in over to our own hometown city council stuff. And uh, this is uh, Jeff Easton. He's a resident who wishes to have Missoula become a sanctuary city um, with a growing number of hate groups that have been um, kind of just growing around in the nation. So this is what he has to, uh, this is how he describes a sanctuary city. Missoula and you, our elected leaders, have the opportunity to make a powerful statement in support of these people who are trying to get what we often take for granted, a chance at the American dream. A sanctuary city is one that adopts local policies designed not to prosecute people solely for being undocumented individual in the country in which they are currently living. These practices can be by law or they can be in fact. The term generally applies to cities that do not allow municipal funds or resources to be used to enforce national immigration laws, usually by not allowing police or municipal employees to inquire about an individual's immigration status. Specifically, officers shall not arrest nor book persons in violation of Title VIII, Section 1325 of the United States Immigration Code, illegal entry. There are currently 31 sanctuary cities in the U.S., ranging from the likes of New York and Los Angeles to communities more like Missoula, namely Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Portland, Maine. It would be an important message to send to our community and to the people of this land that Missoula not, will not stand with hate, will not live in fear, and that we are a group that welcomes difference, diversity, and hope. All right, so that was uh, his uh, little quote, and of course, uh, sanctuary sh sanctuary city is basically, in a way, um, I think that um, with uh, some communities talk, uh, talking about how Missoula is becoming an unofficial unofficial sanctuary for refugees, um, they already have families from northern African countries that, that haven't been able to uh, go home for over twenty years. Um, Soft Landing Missoula is the organization that uh, is uh, spearheading um, these such programs to help people come here as refugees. But of course, sanctuary, city, sanctuary cities are more towards um, undocumented um, immigrants. So a lot of times it's a, a place to establish an area in which, like, if you come here, you're welcome here. You're welcome to stay here, regardless of your background or your history and all that stuff. So um, the most uh, okay. So most of the uh, consent agenda items were approved, um, which included the Kim Williams contract um, with the trail. You know, of course, I talked about it uh, uh, last week, uh, where they talked about um, allocating some more funds to um, help improve the uh, Kim Williams trail because trails are a big thing that's happening in Missoula. A lot of the cities pushing forward with these trails to connect basically. Hamilton and beyond, because there's a town a little further past Hamilton that's connected to this uh, trail, all the way to Missoula and then beyond to Bonner. So the Kim Williams Trail is trying to connect to Bonner from Missoula. So the, um, they were going to work. On, they uh, they kind of had uh, they worked on that that passed. Um, I think 
Then another big thing happened. Um, uh, they had a little bit of a discussion during the consent agenda about the standing with Standing Rock. The Missoula had made a proclamation that they wanted to say, um, send a letter saying that Missoula supports the Standing Rock um, protest. So of course, um, uh, Harlan Wells did not approve of this because he thinks that uh, Missoula shouldn't be too much of a political statement and more uh, towards um, dealing with more internal um, things. So that's basically what he said. Um, the next one is, um, uh, um, acting, May, acting Mayor Marilyn Marler had a proclamation of Resiliency Week. So basically, this is what she had to say about that proclamation. The America, the economic burden of chronic disease, researchers identified and ranked seven chronic diseases in order of prevalence. Pulmonary conditions, hypertension, mental disorders, heart disease, diabetes, cancers, and stroke. And whereas, according to a 2014 Missoula County Health Assessment, Missoulians have a lower incidence of death from cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, but have a significant struggle with emotional disturbances such as depression and anxiety, which has led to a suicide rate almost twice that of the national average. And whereas there is an economic burden associated with depression and anxiety for the cost of treatment, absenteeism, and uh, presenteeism, which is showing up for work and not performing well due to illness. And whereas research in the last five years has indicated that increasing resilience is a good way to reduce health care costs, increase vitality and productivity, and create a starting place for awareness and education. Now, therefore, John Engen, Mayor of the City of Missoula, recognizes the week of November 14th through 20th, 2016, as Community Resilience Week. All right, so that was a nice little proclamation that the City Council um, did. Of course, moving on, the next thing is Costco is looking to a uh, new location, and with the county uh, preventing many annexations of certain areas, the city has basically stepped in to um, initiate um, the Costco into War Two. So a lot of that um, basically is um, allowing them to move forward with their um, new area. But of course, just letting you guys know is that this was a public hearing that did not pass uh, because they're going to put it back to committee and they're going to discuss it a little more. But I have a little map and if you take a look, uh, this is basically the general area of, of which um, the new Costco is beginning to be located. It's just off of uh, Broadway, which is also known as Highway 10. And if you uh, basically um, go a little bit further past um, it looks Reserve like it's Street, towards the airport. It's pretty much towards the airport. On the left There's side. a little parcel of land, like right mm -hmm. here. I'd zoom in, but it wouldn't look that great when I zoom in. So um, just bear with me. <laughs> it's uh, if you go further down Broadway. Uh, it, here's Flynn Lane. If you guys are familiar with Flynn Lane, it curves around and then goes back, and then you get on to West Broadway to get there. But of course, um, a lot of ways uh, to get to Costco, you'd have to get on Broadway um, all the time, every single time. So of course, um, a lot of this, um, back to me, um, one of the things for sure is that the city of Missoula had a bulk controversy over Costco's new location last night, and um, it's not necessarily uh, about the fact that Costco is moving, it's about it's, it's all about the traffic involved. So this is uh, Vicky Bostic on opposition of it, or in our community, but not in a neighborhood that is this residential. This is not a wise choice for a placement. There must be a location that doesn't impact a school, a large residential area, or a road without the infrastructure to meet the huge amount of traffic and the amount of auto trips that are already being quoted, let alone what will happen in the foreseeable future in a few years. Currently, Flynn Lane has no light at Mullen. It is foolhardy to think that a huge portion of the Costco traffic will not use Flynn to bypass that portion of reserve that they could do. It is already so dangerous, and the future will only be worse. Mary Jane is a very small band-aid to the huge traffic issue that will grow and does continue to grow. There will not be a collector road in the near future that is close to Pleasant View Residential or for the school or that will get some of that traffic mitigated. All right, so um, for you guys who don't know, uh, 
Flynn Lane is also where uh, Helga Elementary is, and that's a, a, a little slow school district area. A lot of people who live up Mullen, especially use Flynn Lane to get onto England Street, which is a street that Pad passes that new neighborhood that just popped up right behind all those uh, areas, you know, uh, off of Reserve, uh, you know, the, the Taco del Sol yeah, area. Taco so. del Sol, Sushi Nara. Yep. And yeah. a lot of people uh, bypass England Street, basically, Flynn Lane, England Street, and then they get to Reserve Street. And a lot of ways, um, People uh, may, of course, Mary Street is another uh, through street that they're gonna that they're proposing that basically goes from Mullen to Broadway without uh, getting on the hassle of going on Reserve Street. But of course, uh, most people do take Reserve who live on that side of town, while people who live on the Mullen side of town always take Flynn Lane to get to Costco. But uh, here is another. Uh, um, this is Ann Nelson, and she's opposed to Costco based on the design. Design is much more than creating new products or things for the marketplace. Design is also how we create our daily experience of place. It is unfortunate that Missoula does not have a tradition of design conversation. Hopefully that is changing. This brings me to the subject of process. How was this project created? What was the design process? Who was the client? Was it only the Costco management? Shouldn't the surrounding residential community also be considered a design client? No mention of the children who will no longer be able to go outside of their home due to the high traffic volume. They were not considered a client. Who was on the design team? I have heard mention of an architect and a street designer and a finance guy from the Issaquah. But this proposal is so simplistic, I have to assume that there were only city street engineers involved in the design. I can hear it now. Just drawing straight lines, ma'am. Just sticking to the grid, ma'am. Shortest distance between two points, ma'am. All right, so that's uh, that was basically her uh, interpretation of how people are designing this. And of course, I have this very, um, let's see, Kim Kelly, um, he is disappointed with the lack of safety of some of the secondary streets people take to Costco. And this is what he had to say about that. You have to address traffic calming on Mary Jane. Right now, there are only two primary feeder streets, what you call collectors. East and West, England. We have asked for traffic calming for four years. Just crosswalks, a couple of uh, signs. Four years. It was approved by the Neighborhood Council and our, our board, and we were told last year we'll have it up by September. It is not there. That falls on you. You're the head that controls the neck and everything else. So we are going to oppose. We don't oppose Costco. We love Costco. I'm a member of Costco. They've been good neighbors. They've been generous neighbors to the town of Missoula. But when he talks about, what was it, 100,000 cars? 10,000 cars a day? 10,000 cars a day. That's in their parking lot. they got to get there and they've got to get back. That's 20,000. All right, so that's um, what he had to say about it. Just in general, all around safety, there's increased amount of traffic. They want to improve the safety. And if you haven't been down England Street, it's very curvy all around. There's probably one roundabout, but that's usually for like their main intersection. Um, yeah, there's, uh, that's, the, the item was returned to committee uh, for further discussion. Uh, most residents that live up uh, Mall and 10 do take the Flynn Lane route. Um, through England to go to get, get to Costco. But of course, back in my day, there was no access through England Street. There wasn't even a residency in England Street. That was part of the old Doherty Ranch. And part of the old Doherty, Ran Doherty Ranch is also being sold to, a parcel is being sold to Costco. So in a way, it's not necessarily residential. It's like old farmland that was turned into residential. But again, again, um, the Doherty Ranch area is technically 
privately owned farmland and a lot of that they're selling towards Costco. So I don't know. It, there's a lot of um, things going on with this and that. But I'm going to end on that note um, because they're going to be talking more about the new location and how they're going to um, um, deal with the traffic. So uh, the next uh, segment I'm going to talk about, uh, of course, um, Marilyn Marler, uh, she reacts to Donald Trump being elected president because, you know, it's a big thing that's happening. He's our president. Um, and this is how uh, she reacts to it. Since last week's election, many of our Missoula friends and neighbors have felt angry and even afraid. I think that's understandable after our country elected a president who, in my opinion, campaigned on fear and bigotry towards non-Christians, people of color, the LGBTQ community, women, and other minorities. Equally troubling to me as a biologist is the blatant disregard for science. The method of scientific inquiry is the foundation of modern health care, natural resource management, energy technology, and so much more. I understand that people are frustrated and they voted for change. I know some of my friends and family who voted for Trump despite the bigoted statements and not because of those statements, but I still feel discouraged. What brings me hope is knowing that regardless of national politics, Missoula will continue to support human rights and the environment. I'm proud to stand in support of Missoula's commitments to LGBTQ rights, in support of welcoming refugees, in support of science in environmental conservation, and against sexual violence. Missoulians have been clear about our priorities in these areas. Let's keep working. In fact, let's work even harder. Please consider donating your time, your money, or both to organizations that you believe in. Nonprofits are going to be increasingly important for the next several years for human rights and environmental protections. And I have faith that Missoula can be a great example. All right, so uh, that's what she had to say about uh, response to Trump being elected. Um, yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's your city council. Yeah. If you want to find it, watch the whole entire meeting, it's over two hours long. You can um, watch it at ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a wonderful website uh, where you can find out everything that's happening with your city council. Today, there's a whole bunch of committee meetings, which indeed they will be talking about Costco and their new location. Um, basically, they got they got really big yeah and they need to get bigger so they can sell more stuff yeah basically. but it, it does make sense though the all the concerns of the traffic on the yeah. side streets because those are crucial well, streets of people I, to get the, around the idea is that um if they move to broadway it's probably a little bit easier because uh, everybody knows that reserve street traffic isn't just about costco it's about getting home getting across town and it's the primary source for getting across town. Always uh, north, south to north or north to south is the worst streets around. Um, Brook Street is another really bad street. That's like the only street that basically goes up and south. And then of course Reserve Street is the primary street. And then people, they try to take the side street, Russell Street, which is even worse. And then basically, you know, if you try to go even further uptown, it, it, just don't bother. It's yeah. a completely waste of time. And yeah, that's uh, traffic in Missoula. It's only getting worse, but it's definitely a lot easier than any other major city. Yeah, it's true. I'm not saying that Missoula is a major city. We're 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 peanuts compared to other. It's places. true, but we're our, major in Montana. Our traffic is very frustrating, but I guess it'd be even more so if people drove the way they did in a bigger city. Yeah. Yeah. But of course. Um, now it's time to be frustrated, but on a whole new level, it's time for Hallmark or Bullmark. Okay. <laughs> Let's play. I totally forgot about this. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. I wish you had hair like mine. Yes. My imaginary hair. Okay, okay. anyways. Um, <coughs> take it away, Seth. Nothing's worse than getting fire, but just before Christmas, even more so. Michael Easton must find a job for Christmas, but finding a permanent position proves difficult. But with a little magic from up north, way north, Michael will find that some seasonal jobs are worth taking. <laughs> and the movie's called Seasonal Work. <laughs> is this a Hallmark Reason movie or is this complete Bullmark? Um. I'm gonna say. Oh, goodness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, say Hallmark. You're gonna say Hallmark? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with you, Asaph. I'll say Hallmark. Wrong. It's Bullmark? It's no. complete Bullmark. Are you guys ready to play round two of Hallmark or. I knew it. <clears throat> Bullmark. Bullmark. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. 
Christina, the manager of a tabar- department store, is determined to land a manager position because that's what you gotta do <laughs> at, at a new Paris location. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, she sets out to impress Victoria, the store's owner, by creating the best holiday display in history. Fresh out of inspiration and desperate, Christina turns to a recently fired store employee who also happens to be a talented artist and a single dad. Oh, God. And this movie is called My Christmas Dream. <laughs> I dream for a husband and, and a kid. And a job in Paris. And a single a single dad. No, that, that'll that save and me it. getting pregnant and going to baby stuff. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, is this uh, My Christmas Dream? Is this a Hallmark Christian movie or is this Bullmark? I want to say this is Bullmark and I think that this is actually Scott's Christmas Dream. <laughs> I'm going to say Hallmark. <laughs> You I'm say Hallmark? Hallmark? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Well, this is your this is your last Hallmark or Bullmark, Noel, and uh, you're wrong. Oh, it's, <laughs> a, it's a Hallmark or Zone movie. Oh, God, I just lost. <laughs> yeah, like come back and just be like try to get a get yeah. at least once. Yeah, uh, that well, did not even. You don't well. have a spare story in your back pocket, do you? For you know, yeah, to no. Oh well, oh, most well. of the time I do pretty well. I just have a uh, really geeky wallet. I'll oh, take well. that. Here, I'll, I'll take boop, that. Boop, 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 boop. No, no, it's my money. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, thanks for joining us yeah. uh, this morning on Wake Up Missoula. It looks like we already oh. filled our whole entire show. I didn't even notice. I didn't even know that I was going along on my segment. But, of course, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks to our guest, Tracy. Uh, Helen? Helen. Helen? Okay. Yes. Tracy Hallam, thank you very much for coming on, as well as her associate Hayden for being here for moral support. But the funny, funny thing about Hayden is that Hayden is actually my one of my best friends, and we've known each other since we were like 17. <laughs> so it's funny to see him come on today. Yeah. But <laughs> thanks for tuning in with us, you guys. Uh, our last show is going to be on Friday, so be sure to watch us then. And for Wicked Missoula, my name is Noah McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's ASAP. Bye tonight.